neonatal respiratory distress syndrome which is also called as the respiratory distress syndrome in newborn so in this picture you can see all the clinical manifestations in the child that is in the newborn infant we can say a tachypnea nasal flaring expiratory grunting retractions cyanosis all these are the important clinical manifestations of uh, respiratory distress syndrome in the newborn so in the newborn the respiratory distress syndrome is not because of the infection or sepsis or anything it is mainly because of the deficiency of the surfactant so the surfactant we know that it is made up of uh, dipalmitoyl phosphatidylcholine which reduces the surface tension and uh, this surfactant decreases the pressure needed to keep the alveoli inflated and it mainly responsible for the maintenance of alveolar stability and to prevent alveolar collapse prevent atelectasis so now what is the etiology of uh, neonatal respiratory distress syndrome it is mainly predisposed by prematurity maternal diabetes and birth by c section and it is caused by the deficiency of the pulmonary surfactant which is also called as lecithin in what you study in your medical biochemistry which is called as dipalmitoyl phosphatidylcholine now what is the pathophysiology you should know this because you might have studied this pathophysiology in the physiology topics itself during your graduation days we know about the surfactant that uh, surfactant is responsible for the maintenance of the surface tension and the surfactant deficiency leads to increased surface tension in the lungs responsible for collapse of the alveoli and that lead to atelectasis that exactly what you can see in the ARDS not only that because of the collapse of the alveoli there will be an hypoxemic state so whenever there is an atelectasis there will be low compliance and low functional residual capacity because of the collapse of the alveoli so because of this what happens is there will be an hypoxemic state hypoxemia hypoxemia can cause damage to the endothelial cells as well as epithelial cells of the alveoli again same thing whenever there is a hypoxic state it is causing damage to the endothelial cells of the pulmonary capillaries as well as damage to the epithelial cells of the alveolus can cause escape of the fluid into the interstitium that can again cause the high line membrane that exactly what you can see over here but one important pathophysiology what you need to know over here is if you concentrate here carefully we know that the hypoxemia results in a primarily from the mismatching of the ventilation as well as perfusion and here what happens is blood bypasses atelectatic air spaces which is called as intrapulmonary shunting that is right to left shunting that mainly occurs through the ductus arteriosus as well as foramen ovale mainly because there will be an increased pulmonary vascular resistance which also contributes to the decreased oxygenation so not only that the pathophysiology that is the the shunting intrapulmonary shunting and uh, the right to left shunting mainly through the ductus arteriosus and foramen ovale because of the increased pulmonary vascular resistance also responsible for the decreased oxygenation and leads to severe hypoxemic states and whenever there is a hypoxemia it is always accompanied by the respiratory as well as metabolic acidosis now let us see the pathology same like in ARDS here also because of the pathophysiology same there will be an escape of the fluid from the capillaries into the interstitium as well as into the lungs that is the reason alveoli are collapsed grossly there is a heavy lung purple lung and there will be engorged pulmonary vasculature and the microscopic picture is also evident with the eosinophilic hyaline membrane within the alveoli that is surrounding the alveolar walls and the clinical manifestation where the infant is normal at birth but dyspnea tachypnea and cyanosis within 30 minutes after 
birth that is very very important for your exam and these are the typical signs what you can see typical signs include grunting which prevents end expiratory alveolar collapse that's the reason grunting is a predominant feature what you can see in the neonatal respiratory distress syndrome nasal flaring which reduces the nasal resistance and reflects increased use of accessory muscles of respiration so that's how nasal flaring is another important protective phenomena along with the previous one called as grunting and there will be an intercostal and subcostal retractions mainly because of decreased lung compliance because already we said that there will be an increased pulmonary vascular resistance and there will be a decreased compliance so intercostal and subcostal retractions mainly because of decreased lung compliance and the highly compliant chest wall so now you can see this uh, imaging there will be a very clear ground glass appearance. This reflects the ground glass appearance is a typical sign for microatelectasis as well as air bronchiograms reveals the microatelectasis in this picture. So this arrow mark indicates the ground glass appearance. And what is the treatment for neonatal respiratory distress syndrome? Exogenous surfactant at birth to the infants under 28 weeks and also corticosteroids to the mother before birth mainly because steroids increases the formation of surfactant which is a protective phenomenon and mainly to prevent hypoxemic states or to reduce the hypoxemic conditions oxygen therapy but there will be a risk of oxygen toxicity and damage mainly caused by the reactive oxygen species which are oxygen derived free radicals so this is what is about uh, neonatal respiratory distress syndrome